Pat Brady is uh, a friend of the show, as you well know. If you listen, former federal and state prosecutor, former head of the Republican Party, a lifetime Republican. And uh, he knows from the law, and he can explain to us again where we are and where we're going with all this Trump drama. So I guess, Pat, I'm going to try to avoid the constant harangue that I'm throwing out to people. Like, uh, there's a lot of Republicans that can choose from. How about picking one that's not indicted every 10 minutes? And just jump right to what the legalese means of the current deal. So what's a target letter? Hey, morning, guys. A target letter is a process of the investigation. So like you get a historical investigation like this, and you're the prosecutor. You talk to the defense attorneys, go, and the first question will say, am I a subject, am I a witness, or am I a target? And if the prosecutor says you're a target, that means you're the subject of the investigation. At the very end of the investigation, the grand jury investigation, you send what is called a target letter, if you're the prosecutor, to the defendant saying, hey, you are the target of our investigation. You now have an opportunity. We are inviting you to come into the grand jury and give your side of the story and you know, tell us uh, why we're wrong. The, re- the reality is what that is is a signal to the defense counsel and the defendant. They're going to get indicted. Nobody ever comes in and talks to the grand jury because that would you'd just probably say something stupid and get yourself indicted again. So in all, it's substantially likely that the former president is going to be indicted on the uh, January 6th activities and related uh, activities in, in order to obstruct. It's going to be a, a conspiracy to obstruct. Um, the well, I, want to, I want to take these one by one because I've got them here. And Jane's got a question for you as well. So before I jump to the three various things cited, the statutes and the target letter, Jane. Yeah. So how often did targets actually speak to the grand juries? Never. So it's just a, it's never. just. I never, I mean, maybe it's happened, but, uh, the reality is it's, it, it's kind of, it's in the U.S. Attorney's Manual on how you're supposed to proceed when you do a, one of these kind of, any kind of investigation. And, uh, they don't because at this, at this point, they know they're likely going to be indicted. There's going to be no way you're going to go in and talk the grand jury, uh, out of an indictment. And so I, I've never seen anybody actually respond. All right, so if we can agree the Alvin Bragg FEC uh, thing stretched the statute and didn't do anything um, uh, in a positive vein to move the ball forward, to have Trump face the music if he broke any laws, this is not what we're talking about when it comes to the documents case, to this case, or the Georgia case. So this is around January 6th. The three, the three statutes are um, deprivation of rights. What does that mean? Well, we have a right. I'm not sure what you mean by deprivation of right. Well, what statute are you saying? Well, I'm just going from the Wall Street Journal. It says the three statutes that are cited in the target letter are deprivation of rights, conspiracy to defraud, and witness tampering. Yeah, well, the the, the bigger picture is, uh, first of all, we don't really know what's going to happen, but it, they'll charge it as a, a 371 conspiracy, meaning a, 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 a conspiracy to, def- to defraud the government, basically. And that deprivation of rights would be that they engaged in a conspiracy, which means a group of them uh, agreed to commit an unlawful act and did an act in furtherance of that uh, agreement. And in in this case, it's going to be they tried to obstruct the lawful processes of the transition of power. I'm not exactly sure when they say deprivation of rights. I'm not exactly sure what they're referring to. But he's going to be charged because he and other people agreed that they're going to try to stop the lawful election results. And I think the, the two components are going to be the uh, fake electric scam and the fundraising scam. Uh, that's what the press accounts I saw last night. So I'm not exactly sure what they're not by deprivation. Of and, and what about the witness tampering? Yeah, witness. there's a lot of witness tampering, I, I'm sure, because, uh, I mean, that, that's kind of on the, the fringes of these other indictments. But the, 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 the serious charge will be the 371 conspiracy, the conspiracy to defraud the government. And the interesting thing people were folks were talking about the last 24 hours is throwing this fundraising piece of it in, meaning that he went around knowing that it was false, told the whole country that he, you know, the election was a fraud, send me money. And he raised tens of millions of dollars off that. Now, conceivably, there's a forfeiture provision in the law, too, that they could actually seek to get that money back, meaning that he'd be on the hook for tens, of, if not hundreds wow. of millions of dollars. All right, so the fake electors thing is a gigantic problem. And, you know, when you come to this election fraud, election fraud, the far right of the Republican Party has turned into Pee Wee Herman. It's, I know you are, but what am I? It's the election was fraudulent, the election was fraudulent. And then we keep coming up with these cases where we see that the games are being played on the, the far right side here. Sixteen fake electors were charged in Michigan. 
um, with attempting to uh, defraud the election there and uh, flip the state. Yeah, I, the facts of that, and I read the indictment this morning, it's kind of Keystone Cops. It was like 20 people, the uh, hardcore Republicans, including, I think, the former co-chair of the Michigan party that decided, hey, remember, when you vote, you're voting for electors, and those electors then represent you in the Electoral College, and the elector, electors are certified. That, that was the January 6th date. So these people were to represent Michigan and represent how Michigan people voted for president, and you know, Biden won by 150,000 votes. But 20 of them got together, forged all these documents saying they were the lawful electors, and actually tried to file them in the Michigan uh, Senate. And it was just kind of a joke. They tried to sneak into the Capitol. And, and just tell to convince everybody that they were the lawful uh, electors. But they, um, the Michigan attorney general originally said she wasn't going to investigate this and gave it to the feds, and she came back and charged them. But it's really just 20 nut jobs. It, but the bigger thing here is at the highest levels of our government, meaning the president of the United States, he's going to likely be charged with engaging in a similar type scheme at the very highest levels. All right, so uh, loony attorneys around the president – Bad advice to the president. Pence brought this up on the road yesterday. That's not a defense, is it? Oh, God, no. I mean, the, this, they could be charged as co-conspirators. This is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. I mean, it, to, to think that you're going to somehow insert electors, they're going to assert that they are the actually lawfully elected electors, where there's no evidence whatsoever, whatsoever, of any kind of electoral fraud. It's It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen, but they're all... In big trouble. I mean, Rudy Giuliani you know, has had his uh, four or five days he spent with the prosecutors, but it's it's ridiculous. And the you know the bigger point you talk about the politics of you talk about the Republicans or Democrats. We deserve better than this. Amen. I mean, the country deserves better than this nonsense, and we deserve better than an eighty-two year old man. We need to start over, move on. It's time to elect some new people. Well, that's absolutely true. And people have to get off their ass and care enough to vote to actually change things that aren't working on both sides um god bless every 78 80 82 92 year old person in the country but at some point you may need to step aside for the people who get their next turn or maybe there's a better 75 year old that's ready to step up um, but the two top choices as it stands right now that's a pretty scary option no it's horrible and we deserve better we, we really do just uh, both of them i mean Trump is an absolute train wreck disaster, and he's got so many legal problems right now. And the far right or the right can, or the Republicans can scream that these are all witch hunts. I've read all this stuff, man. These are these are solid cases and cases that should have been brought. And the reality is Merrick Garland is not bringing these cases. Jack Smith is bringing these cases. They set this guy up, the special prosecutor, that way so there wouldn't be that claim that the Biden administration is trying to uh, win the election. But the reality is... Trump is basing his entire life on winning this race. It has nothing to do with the American people, what's good for the country, what's good for you and I. It's all about Donald Trump getting in there because the minute he gets in there, he can pardon himself on the federal cases. And that's exactly what he's going to do. And if you look at the arguments they made yesterday down in Florida on the on the documents case on when they're going to schedule the trial, their argument is Donald Trump's running for president. He can't be prosecuted. It, it, that violates every tenet of our Constitution, right. our history, right. anything this country stands for. If you watched his speeches last weekend, there's not a whole lot of difference between his speeches and Mussolini's speeches. 100%. And, 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 no, you're absolutely right. And as the thing goes forward, the, the minute Donald Trump starts talking about policies that he wants to put into effect and actual good ideas to lower grocery prices and to take care of energy problems in the country... And to help Americans, well, somebody call me and let me know. Because every day it's the same thing, and then it's rinse and repeat. Oh, woe is me. Oh, my God, they're out to get me. Uh, just take your whiny self back to Mar-a-Lago and Republican Party move on. you got to pay attention to what he said Saturday, too. I mean, close attention. He said he wants to basically get the whole government, the whole government, under his control. Where right. he can hire and fire, he wants to take over right. the, the FCC. This is some scary stuff. Honestly, guys, Steve, I've never, ever worried about the country. This guy is a dangerous man. There is a minimum. I know your listeners don't like this, but this guy is dangerous. We need to move on, and we have some great candidates as Republicans. That's exactly great. right. If you're truly a Republican, there's a minimum of six electable Republicans right now, right now, that actually want to do something positive, that have a legitimate conservative agenda. 
No, Trump's not a conservative. Trump can't spell conservative. All right, thank you, Pat. All right, see you guys. See you Thanks, later. Pat. Uh, it's Pat Brady.